Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This channel is dedicated to finding out whether I really do know it all or not. Make sure you like and subscribe and definitely ask questions in the comments or send me emails. Um, my wife ferrets out good questions and she sends them to me and we find out whether I know what the hell I'm talking about. Okay, ready? Here we go. Drum roll, please. What is the grand tack theory? What is the grand tack theory? Okay, uh, astronomy question, I believe, which is cool. <laughs> I like astronomy questions. Um, okay, so the grand tack theory, I, as far as I remember, is the theory that Jupiter, um, gosh, I think, yeah, it formed relatively close into the sun back, you know, way back when the solar system was forming. And then what it did was it kind of like made a attack <laughs> just sort of cruised on out to where it is right now um i believe part of that theory is that there was some other planet that kind of knocked it off kilter or not well whatever anyway it got it out of its original orbit and pushed it out further um and that's actually part of the rare earth hypothesis which is that without jupiter kind of being in that range and sucking out a whole lot of debris number one well the earth was bombarded in the late heavy bombardment but um it certainly would have had more, uh, we would have had more rocks and stuff in our orbit, uh, but also we would have had, um, the, the Earth probably would have been larger than it is, so we would have had more gravity, um, potentially a lot more gravity, which would have made it more difficult for life to evolve in a, um, uh, you know, maybe not the single cell organisms, but anything bigger, and especially on land and so forth, would have had difficulty uh, forming. So anyway, I believe that's correct. I'm going to check now and make sure before I just keep blabbing on and saying like what I know. But anyway, give me a moment here. It may take me a couple of minutes, so I may have to speed it up really fast because I'm going to have to kind of like dig around a little bit, but I'll be right back. All right, so, um, hmm, <laughs> I'm like half right, half wrong. I knew that there was a little bit of question about the very beginning of this theory. Anyway, I'm definitely right <laughs> that the uh, Grand Tack theory has to do with Jupiter moving. Um, the hypothesis, however, and it's called the hypothesis, not a theory, and I was actually thinking about that. The question itself says theory, but I was like, eh, because usually a theory is a hypothesis. A hypothesis is just an educated guess, and a theory is a hypothesis that's backed up by a good deal of evidence. For example, the Einstein's theory of general relativity is a theory because it's backed up by an awful lot of evidence. Anyway, uh, the deal is the Grand Tack hypothesis proposes that after its formation at 3.5 astronomical units, which is actually not that far, um, not too much past the, okay, so the Earth is one astronomical unit, so that's like three and a half times out, so I think closer than where it is now, because I can't remember exactly how far Jupiter is out, but it's, it's quite a ways. Uh, anyway, it migrated inward to just outside the orbit of the Earth at 1.5 AU, uh, before reversing course due to, and again, like I said, it was a resonance with Saturn according to this hypothesis. And so basically what happened was Saturn and Jupiter were in a resonant orbit, which means that like maybe every two or three times Jupiter went around, it, it synced up with Saturn and that gave it more of a boost and more of a boost and more of a boost and finally ejected it out into the outer solar system. And let's see, the, the, reverse, the reversal of Jupiter's migration is likened to the path of a sailboat changing directions. That's why it's called a tack. Uh, so it actually started out and it migrated in and then it bounced back out again. So it changed tack. So <laughs> at least I understood what the basic concept was. I was like, eh, not quite, not quite right, but, mm, you know, sort of right. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's the basic idea. The rare earth hypothesis that I... Um, mentioned when I was talking about it earlier is actually a rather interesting element and that is that uh, the idea that the reason why there's not more you know life in the universe and so forth is that uh, at least that we see is that the earth is actually extremely rare and it has a lot of things that caused it to be not a normal planet um the biggest and most obvious of them is if you look straight up in the night sky, you will see the moon. We have an outrageously large moon for how big our planet is, and the best theories at this point are that um, just after the formation of the Earth, another sort of Mars-sized planet went bam and just smashed into us. And number one, it sped our rotation way up so that we have much faster day and night cycles than a lot of planets do. And number two, it pitched off a whole bunch of junk and all of that junk eventually kind of coalesced into the moon. 
Um, and there's, oh my gosh, <laughs> there's a lot of things with that. There's tides, there's the faster rotation of the earth, there's the fact that we have a very heavy molten metal core, which uh, the part of the theory is, or the hypothesis is that um, uh, some of that metal from the other planet kind of sunk into the center of the earth so that we have a really big uh, dynamo inside of the earth, which creates a very large mag magnetic field, which is really crucial to our form of life, at least, um, because if we had too much radiation from the sun and from space, which is being blocked by a giant force field of magnetic fields, that uh, it would be very difficult for life to, you know, maybe not be created in the first place, but for anything like, you know, real complicated like us to exist, it's, um, it's a very complicated thing to happen. So anyway, I don't know. I'll give myself like a 70, 75% correct on this one. <laughs> it was a very good question, but the reason why I'm giving myself credit for it is that I feel like um, at least I had the basic idea, although I should have probably figured out what tack meant and realized that it was actually out, in, out. Um, which, anyway. So there you go. <laughs> Pretty well answered and so forth. Uh, you know. So uh, go ahead, make sure you like and subscribe, and especially ask questions in the comments or ask questions at drknowitallknows at gmail.com. And my wife again will go through and she will find good questions for me. She'll ask them and we will answer them here. Till next time. Thanks. Bye bye.